From the soggy mountains of West Virginia, welcome to another Brownie Bites edition of It's Always Game Day in Cleveland. I'm Daryl Ryder. Let's start with the Browns uh, moving practice up Monday morning so that they could avoid some afternoon thunderstorms that were in the forecast. They worked in pads for the first time here in camp. It was about a 75 minute workout. They'll be in shells on Tuesday. It's a light day of work on Wednesday, back in pads Thursday before they wrap things up early Friday morning and then hop on an airplane and get back to Cleveland. Let's uh, also mention uh, Jerome Ford, Brown's running back. He's a new proud dad, so congratulations to Jerome. That's why uh, he was absent uh, for the early portion of training camp. He was on the field for the first time on Monday. Now to David Njoku. We got to hear from him uh, after practice. Uh, Njoku is, of course, coming off of an outstanding Pro Bowl season, his first since the Browns used a first-round pick on him back in 2017. He spoke uh, very openly, very candidly about how that horrific accident last fall that caused him to suffer severe burns to his face and his hands impacted him both personally as well as professionally. I feel like it changed my perspective uh, immensely, you know, in terms of just like you know what really matters in life and and uh, how how far the human body can, can go, you know. Uh, but yeah, you know, I feel like you know. Uh, Pretty much, you know, we've done everything individually that we wanted to thus far, but it's up to us, you know, to get things done as a team, as a whole. And that's what really, really matters, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I had the Pro Bowl last year, but I was still kind of pissed, you know, just, you know, being there, just not being, you know, uh, practicing for the Super Bowl, you know what I mean? So I, I, everyone, I believe, on this team inspires to be in that position of playing for a championship. And that's what championship football is all about. The hardest part was going through the fire, literally. And after that, you know, Nothing really is as painful as getting burned, you know, getting your face burned off. So running and, you know, pushing, you know, you know on the field, I don't think it's anything compared to getting your face burned. So I think that was the hardest part was the, the, the act of, you know, burning my face and my hand and everything else started, you know, to smooth out a bit. Anything worth anything is going to come with adversity. And that's the beauty of it, you know what I mean? Um, we're going to be here for another, what, few more days and back to Cleveland and, you know, grind it out there too. And we're all pushing towards one goal, just like every other team. And that is so beautiful. As I mentioned, Njoku has made tremendous progress with the Browns in recent years under head coach Kevin Stefanski. Stefanski offered his thoughts on his Pro Bowl tight end, and we also heard from Browns executive vice president of football operations and general manager Andrew Barry as well. I wasn't here for the beginning part of his career. Uh, you know, when, he, when I came in, there were definitely some uh, ups and downs with Dave, and he's been, he's talked about it, I've talked about it, uh, but he's a team player. His evolution as a team leader has been the most impressive to me. Uh, he's a guy that uh, his teammates rely on, I, I rely on when it comes to the team and, and understanding what we're doing and those type of things and, and where we are and messaging. Uh, he, he's, he's on top of that from a teammate standpoint. I think people forget, David was 20 years old when we, we drafted him. And if you think about, um, I don't know, maybe all of you guys were, were very, very mature 20 year olds. Uh, I was not always, that was not always the case with me. And you think about now he's what, going into year seven or year, se year seven or eight. Um, you know, he's, a, you know, he's a father now, he's, 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 he's been through the ups and downs. Um, and I think oftentimes in our lives and careers, the the, so almost what I was talking about with earlier, Daryl, like the hard times, they really have us grow and learn the most. Like we're talking about a guy who was a first round pick, had a really good, you know, rookie year, you know, got, you know, got hurt, got to a point where um, felt like the organization gave up on him, got to a point where he was relegated to a lesser role, fought through it, wanted a trade, fought through it. Like we all grow and mature. And so I have a... Um, personal affinity for David, um, seeing him go through all that. Um, and a fun fact, he was actually uh, my first in here. He was my neighbor. He was actually we were in the same apartment complex. So there were times where he actually, uh, I remember my car was in the shop and he took me home from one of our away games, like that type of thing. So I, like, I, I, I love David as a, as a person, you know, first and foremost. And um, I'm really, really proud. As I alluded to, we did hear from Barry, his annual 
training camp press conference on Monday, and obviously one of the topics of conversation that we're at the forefront has to do with quarterback Deshaun Watson. Not only his progress from uh, recovering from that shoulder surgery and injury that he suffered last year, but expectations for Watson's on-field performance here in 2024. Very pleased with Deshaun. Um, I think you've all seen that he's really worked his tail off uh, in terms of his shoulder rehab over the over really like the past year. Um, had a really strong spring. Um, you know, he's done a really nice job here early in camp. So we, we feel like he's in a great place both physically and mentally and, and look forward to a big year some business to address uh, when it comes to the Browns. Barry, of course, uh, doesn't like getting into any specifics when it comes to contract situations and whatnot. Of course, the Browns have several players, including linebacker Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa, who are eligible for contract extensions. Barry didn't want to provide any details there, but he did say that the team is just fine. Uh, They'll be able to uh, operate uh, quite effectively this year, considering where they are uh, with the salary cap. Of course, if you remember a year ago, Barry restructured several contracts to open up salary cap space. He did indicate that is an option this year. It remains to be seen ultimately if he will do so. Of course, one of the hurdles that he had to navigate coming into training camp was Amari Cooper's contract situation. That has been settled. I have the policy. I don't talk about, you know, contracts. I don't talk about um, you know discussions that we've had with individual players. I think everybody here understands what Amari has meant to this organization. Um, and our affinity for him. He's an excellent player, um, outstanding human being. He's a really good professional. Um, and, you know, one of the things that's, you know, that's interesting with Amari, um, you know, s- assuming normal health, uh, you know, he has a chance to get to 10,000 yards this year. Um, and he's probably about a year and a half away from um, having his, uh, if you look over the course of his career, spending the most time with the Browns relative to, to other organizations. So all of those things are important to us. He's, he's been a big uh, part of our success last year, um, and we were glad we were able to resolve the situation. Barry, of course, was in the front office when this franchise was, quite frankly, at its lowest, going through that awful 4-44 and 44 stretch. He was able to reflect upon that while also at the same time acknowledging how far the organization has come now that they are a perennial playoff contender. Everything that we went through the, during that time, whether it was like the lack of success on the field, um, you know, the internal turmoil, just everything that went with it, it really does make you appreciate, you know, the certainly last year, but the past couple of years uh, a lot more. Um, and like, that's actually a cool part of the journey. Like I wouldn't trade that for anything um, because you grow and you learn and it, 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 and it, it, it makes you not take um, the good days for you know for, for granted. So I, I want to start off by saying um, you know by saying that um, in terms of expectation, like I really have two expectations going into every season, and that's for our organization to maximize our potential on the field, um, and for us to be able to handle adversity, however it comes, um, in a high level professional professional way. And that's actually one of the things I was probably most proud of of you know the team last year that. Uh, we had a bunch of different curveballs, and I felt like our players, our coaches, our staff, um, you know, really just handled every one, um, you know, regardless of when it came or how it came. Um, and I was really proud of that group. And um, every team in the NFL is going to have those periods. You don't know what it is, whether it's an injury, a losing streak, you know, what, whatever. Um, but you've got to be able to overcome those moments or those stretches if you want to be playing deep into the playoffs. We heard from the Haslam's on Saturday, and of course, the stadium situation for the Browns is certainly at the forefront of everyone's thoughts, and Barry had his own. From a football standpoint, any solution is like, we're a yes, like two two thumbs up, because any um, solution where we're improving our home environment, where we're improving the fan experience, like that's going to be great for us regardless of where you know or outdoors and indoors i know um you know ownership dave jenkins um you know our our local politicians are are hard at work on a solution if you're asking my opinion personally um you know i personally think that we are like paying these guys to be athletes as opposed to to gladiators so i'd prefer like the don't solution i'd prefer to be um indoors um i think that's you know i think that's better for the team and i also think being in the midwest you know with the elements and everything it's better for our fans as well it creates a better um fan experience late you know late in the year when we're you know when we're making those those playoff pushes but i do i do want to emphasize 
any solution is a good solution. We're happy whether it's a, a renovation, a build, you know, whatever, um, because it just means that our home environment is that much more of a home field advantage here at Cleveland. Boy, it sure feels like momentum continues to build towards a dome in Brook Park. Here in the coming weeks, we'll see if ultimately that's what the Haslams and Browns ultimately decide to do. That's a wrap for the Monday edition of the Brownie Bites. It's always game day in Cleveland. I uh, want to thank you for listening, watching, downloading, and subscribing wherever you get your podcasts, including the free Odyssey app. For my partner, Andy Baskin, I'm Daryl Ryder. From the Greenbrier in West Virginia, where it's always game day in Cleveland.